Hi everyone, I'm Jason Allen. Uh, some of you may know me as the Chaplin Guy, and what I've been doing professionally for the past 15 years is I've been portraying Charlie Chaplin's Tramp. Now, it's a little interesting doing this because we're trying to mimic a character that is really etched in our minds that we've been watching through films. Well, you want to get those subtle things just right, and I've been getting an awful lot of questions over the years uh, how do I do that? How do I do my makeup? How do I prepare my hair? Is your hair really that color? What I'd like to do is I'd like to take you on a tour of just how I go about it. I've done this around the world. I've been to Japan doing an official rendition of Charlie's Tramp in a national television commercial. I've been to India a number of times. I have some fantastic friends there and to California a number of times. Right here at Niles SNA Silent Film Museum which is a very important part of Chaplin history. Uh, so I want to walk you through what I do. And, and, and another thing is, not many people have seen me with gray hair. Uh, this is my natural hair color right now. People have thought that my hair was black all the time. Just like Charlie's, he would dye his hair also. He went prematurely gray, as did I. Uh, he and I are about the same height, within about an inch, depending on what you read. I'm five foot six and a half. Uh, he's five foot six, five foot six and a half. I, it depends on what you read. I've been asked, how do I put my makeup on? What do I use? Do I buy a special makeup? Um, what about my costumes? Where did you get your costumes? Uh, these have been all over the world. They've been to the other side of the planet and back a number of times. And I want to show you the makeup that I use and how I do my hair. Now, first of all, I'm going to transform into the tramp uh, here in this video. But I wanted to show you what I use. Uh, first of all, how do I address the gray? What do I do? Well, I happen to find this stuff right here. It's, it's hairspray. It's black hairspray. And it makes my hair jet black. And it's perfect for that. The problem with it is if you rub it while it's dried on there, it might start exposing the contrasting gray that I have. So I have to use a lot of this. But then I had to come up with a solution, kind of like painting a car, a base coat and clear coat. This is just standard hairspray. So I use that mostly as a sealer so I don't rub off the black. I used to dye my hair black and that would just expose my roots after a week. After a couple of days, you'd see my gray roots because it's so high in contrast to the jet black hair color that I used. Uh, I'd have to use this anyway. I put a little bit of this in, just a standard gel. Uh, you know, a number 10 or better, something rock hard, something that keeps it in place. Because as I'm in these hot environments, in India, uh, doing a parade, or in California, walking up and down Niles Boulevard, uh, I'm going to sweat. I'm wearing wool. Here's my wool outfit right here. And I'm wearing makeup. And I'm wearing black hair or a black hat, bowler hat, and jumping around usually. This runs down my face, and this hopefully doesn't. Well, allow it to. Well, here's my little travel kit for makeup. It's really a depository for all my business cards. Oh, there's a like, Chaplin's World ticket in order to admission to Chaplin's World. This is this is my mustache. I've got it in a little canister. Uh, business cards, you know, pencil sharpener for my uh, my my eyeliner pencil. Uh, black pencil and of course Ziploc because uh, you know traveling on, on planes and things and a little bit of uh, brush and black makeup uh, also for my mustache I use this uh, spirit gum first thing I want to do though is I want to just kind of give you a little tour of my costumes the first costume I want to show you is the classic tramp outfit and of course this is one of my my bowler hats and this is another one just in case uh, they fall apart from time to time. I get a little active. I've been using these for years. I found this cane in an antique shop. It's very elasticy and, and quite supple for what age it must be. And finally, here is the actual costume. Um, here's the back of it. It's wool. I ripped out the lining. It had insulation in it as a coat. And I ripped it all out because I do get hot and I don't need the bulk and it can afford to be a little more raggedy. You can see on the collar from my black hair spray uh, coming down there, um, 
yeah, I happened to just find these in, in thrift shops. I found this here and got a little bit of uh, the ribbon put around the edge and some new buttons sewed on there and uh, found some big pants and a shirt. These are my shoes. These have walked a lot of places in the world. Um, these are brand new work boots. They're leather, black leather. They were brand new, but what I did was I, I ripped the sole off of it. If you can see that, I ripped the, the heel off, and it also had a steel toe, and I took the steel toe out. I ripped it all out, all out. I ripped everything out of it. Then I wanted to soften the leather. It was extremely hard. It was like army boots. It's so shiny and new. So what I did is I soaked it in rubbing alcohol. It softened the leather and the paint on the leather broke it up a little bit and I took some sandpaper and a wire brush took some of that off saw it softened it right away and uh, aged it a little bit and then I soaked it in water for quite a while the look of modern times uh, it's very similar to the outfit that he wore in that in, as a factory worker uh, another great costume to wear and this one very recognizable um, very iconic uh, this is from The Great Dictator. Uh, I used this one I, as a, a part of a presentation in India, in Adipur, uh, where on stage I did the dictator speech. And this, this one actually came together very well. I found this entire outfit in a, an army surplus store. Uh, it just happened to be fitting and everything I needed. <laughs> it looks exactly like it when I put it on and uh, I'm very fortunate to have that one. So those are the three main ones that I've used but I primarily use this one. This is the Tramp costume that I use all the time um, along with the hats of course. So what I'd like to do now is I want to go into and I want to talk about my hair. I'm going to start with my hair. This is the hairspray of course that I use. I'm just going to give it a little little spray just to show you briefly what it what it looks like if I spray this onto my hair now I, you know what I do is I hold it up and I spray right inside while spraying this it's just like using spray paint it smells like paint and everything even though it says it's a it's a hairspray it's pretty bad on the lungs so what I've done in my house uh, rather than painting everything black around me because the overspray is enormous and I use a whole can of this on my hair I've actually created a little bit of a uh, a hairspray booth in my house. So I want to take you there and show you how I do it. Come check it out. Here it is. This is just a standard laundry room basically, but I've built this area. It's a sink, of course, with a mirror and a nice light. And it's got a ceiling with a very good fan and lighting goes to the outside and you can see I have a I have used copper tube as a rod a curtain rod to hold these shower curtains that go all around me so I just draw those along and I make it into a booth so let me set up the booth and uh, and then I'm gonna paint my hair so here we are we're inside the booth um, I hope you can hear me I got the fan going and uh, gonna get some spray on there. Really, all I need to do is get the black in there. I'm trying to conceal all my gray, and um, here it goes. Uh, I gotta start from over here, get up and under. It's gonna be a lot of overspray. And there you go, I'm back, and my hair is black, and uh, yeah, so what, what I didn't show you was I used some hairspray just to, to fix it in, but before I did that, I, I had to take the overspray off my ears and 
wipe it off my face and all off the back of my neck and so on. So I had to trim it up nicely by taking all that off and then sealing it with this. So now I can actually touch it and not really get a lot unless I'm playing with it too hard, but I can throw my hat on it and uh, I'm sure some of it will come out onto my hat, but not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, it fits, it works, and it's a black hat. So. Now I have made my own films in Chaplin style, so I'm not sure if you know, but in black and white, uh, if you just film people, their skin might wash out their other features on their face. You might not see their eyes so well. You won't necessarily see their nose or their mouth. So Chaplin's Trant character had very prominent eyes. Uh, to, to show the nose that he put a, a mustache there where, I, where the mouth should be and so on in that situation. But he also wore this white makeup over the rest of his skin because of the, the blood showing through, making a red kind of tone would wash out and become more gray. So to make higher contrast with the dark hair and the dark mustache and the dark eyes to show all the emotions, he would paint the face white. And I have done that in the past. When I'm doing something, uh, a street festival, or I'm in Niles, or somewhere, especially if I'm going to be sweating, it's not a good idea to use the white paint. The white paint does drip off. Instead, what I go for when it's a live person-to-person -person one, first of all, I'm in full color already. I'm going to keep my own skin tone, but then apply the rest of the makeup. So what I want to do first is I'm going to go straight to showing the two things that I'm going to use. I'm going to use my, my, uh, the black pencil eyeliner. I use that to, to draw out my lines on my, uh, around my eyes. And, and at the end, I do my eyebrows. One, in, one iconic look that I particularly like is in the gold rush. When he's in the cabin, he's very dark around the eyes, uh, but he's, he's got some shading around the eye. And I use uh, a little, sort of like a little cake uh, black. You can tell I've been using it for years actually and just a brush and what I do is I, I'm going to color in all my eye socket area here, my upper eyelid and down below here just to give that look. Okay so I'm gonna get right in the camera I'm just gonna get a lot of it on my brush. I start by doing my eyelid and I go right into my socket then and I try to highlight that area just a little more. It's too much Yes. Now what I do is I just rub it around a little more with my fingers. So the difference between the two eyes, uh, this one's obviously darker. It's got that depth. One thing about it is it doesn't have to be 100%. Pay attention to the makeup and the varieties of applications that he uses. Uh, of course, he did do uh, his own. And it would be different every time you know that he spend many years giving us versions of the tramp. Our mind kind of just melts it all together into one awesome character, but the reality is he looks a little different from film to film. So there we go. It's darkened all in, a uh, little messy looking. On a black and white film it would come up nicely, especially if my my skin tone was painted a white, so the contrast would show that a lot better. I'm going to start drawing it right on my eyelid. It's hard to hold the mirror and do this at the same time, but... I've applied in worse conditions. Huh. So as you can see, I'm starting to darken in. You do need to get it on the upper lid as well. You know, I, what works best on my face isn't exactly what works best on Chaplin's face. He and I are not identical in our features. Uh, so I draw mine according to the way my structure holds it, and then I can portray the character uh, as a reasonable facsimile to his character. There's always the fine-tuning. Now I, I have this here because when I was shaving, I actually I cut my ear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my eyebrows. I'm going to start drawing them. I start from the center so that uh, I draw across the top, color in my whole eyebrow. You notice that I'm really just doing the upper part of my eyebrow and above. 
making the inside a little rounded. It's not so square. The shape really doesn't have to be perfect every time. What, one thing I've found is I've had a lot of trouble trying to figure it. Am I doing it right? Is this one, the, the two should match in a way. It's what it looks like when you step back. Is it okay? And then I color in my eyebrow. So it's starting off with that center section and pulling across. And then arching up a bit more for that little bit of a surprise look. Up close, it's not so glamorous. Getting there. That's how I apply my makeup. This is exactly what I do. There's something missing, and that is really obvious. It's this little area right here. Uh, so I'll get my mustache. If you look through Chaplin's films, his mustache does change in height and width and location and so on. So there's no definitive mustache. So what I've done is I've come up with an average one that fits my face. Again, uh, it has to be almost spanning the nose. It's not particularly so small. It's not like uh, the size of your thumb or anything. It's definitely the, the width of the nose and sometimes more. This is a little mustache. Uh, it's got hair on it and it's a, it has a netting and you can see the buildup of all the spirit gum, all the glues that have dried there. I do wash this from time to time, but you can't do it too much or it starts losing the hairs. So what I do is I let it dry and then I crust those pieces off. It's a little gross. Um, actually, it gets to be a lot gross when you're using this spirit gum. I, I actually, I hate the smell of it and I have to put it under my nose. And, yeah, there we go. Uh, crack it open uh, and it should have a brush applicator in it. What I do is I put a little bit on my upper lip, you know, like so. Just a little area here like this. Yeah, I hate the smell of it. Um, but I also paint a little on the back here. I'll give a little, give a little, because I like to make it into sort of like a, a contact cement type of deal. It's not really going to dry on its own for just sitting there, but I do want the chemical or the glue to be right where I need it to be. Now the way spirit gum works is you don't just sit it on there. You have to gum it basically by patting it in the location that you want it. So if I put this on right about here, and I, I put my smile on because that's, that's where I ultimately want it to be. I don't just leave it like that. I have to take it off and gum it. By doing this, you can hear, you can actually feel the application of it starting to get much tackier, much tackier. And I hold it tight, smile, push in, smile. Hopefully that's straight. I don't have a mirror right now. I'm relying on the little lens of my camera here, but I believe that feels right. Yeah. Now a little squint of the eye and a shape of the mouth. And suck up the chin because you know and uh, we've got a similar look and there we go so we've got the look uh, we're getting close um, we really just need the costume so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut now I'm gonna change into my tramp outfit okay and I'm back so all I really did was I uh, I put a shirt on and I put my pants on uh, you know so I wanted to put a tie, plain old tie, put it on. Again, it does not have to be perfect, but it does need to be iconic. This is an antique. Found this one on eBay. Uh, it wasn't sold as a chaplain jacket per se, but it was uh, something I found in England. Got it shipped from England. So this happens to be all that I do. Take a cane, put on your shoes, take your hat, and that's it. I've never really shown anyone my secrets on how I've done this before, so I really appreciate you coming and spending time watching how I do this. Bye. Mm -hmm.